praise the Lord. I bring greetings from India in behalf of Jesus for Asia's ministries in India. I'm really happy to see the viewers uh, through this wonderful uh, program. I pray that God will bless each one of you. And uh, today I'm going to talk about what we are doing uh, for the children in India uh, through Jesus for Asia's ministries. Jesus for Asia Ministries have Bible workers and uh, children programs in the evening, free evening tuition, and we have a media ministry. So God is greatly blessing and reaching the unrich through these wonderful ways. And I'm really very happy to share what God is doing through this wonderful ministry for the children in India. And there is a statistic report that uh, nearly about 40% of the children in India are, doesn't have good healthy food and does not have proper education. In the year 2006, God showed us a place, a village in the south. When we were working there as a Bible worker, as we were visiting door by door, God showed us this wonderful, precious children in that village who were not going to school and who were not able to even have a meal a day. Their parents, especially fathers, they go for work. It's not a regular work. But when they come in the evening, they come with empty hand because what they earn, they've already used it for drinking. And at home, there is nothing. Mothers, they are at home. They don't go for work. And it just was so sad to see those the children were hungry and they were like scavengers running here and there. And when we went visiting these people, the parents' request was, it will be nice if you can do something for our children. Give an education and give them a meal. Give them food so that they will be blessed. God really spoke to us through those parents. When we did a survey, we were really broken because there were so many children who did not have a meal a day. And that is when God started this wonderful ministry and spoke in the hearts of people and God opened this wonderful ministry in India for the children. As I was reading Proverbs where, chapter 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. This was a wonderful verse which really touched me because when I saw those children who were not trained, who were not disciplined, who were without food, who were without education, that really broke my heart. We are praying about it. And God opened this wonderful ministry. And by the grace of God, we started an evening school. This evening school is a program for the children up to class 12th grade. And uh, all kinds of children come to that school. And this is a program for three hours. We do that program in the evening, every day, throughout the week except Sabbath. Because since we give them food, we cannot cook on Sabbath. So we have uh, the program all through six days. On the Friday nights, we have a talent night where we encourage the children to participate in that, to show what talents they have. And these children are really talented because we teach them all through the week the Bible, the stories from the Bible, and songs, and teach them and discipline them, and later after that, we also teach them the secular studies, their day-to-day -day curriculums. And then after that, we give them a healthy, nutritious food, which they really, really enjoy. And most of the children were coming in the beginning just for the meal, for the food. And uh, because they were waiting, 
Even before the school, we would open the evening school, these children were waiting near the door just because that school provided them food and education. Since we teach them the Bible and the stories and the Bible verses, and we also encourage them to memorize. And during the Friday evening in the talent night, they come, they recite, they sing song, they draw the pictures of the stories which they have learnt, and they share what God has done in their lives. And we also encourage them to share those witness so that other children also can be touched, we can also learn and taste that the Lord is good. And in the beginning, we really had a lot of problem. The enemy brought a lot of obstacles, a lot of problem every day. The villages were against this wonderful ministry. They said, we don't want this because we, they thought that uh, in those days it was, uh, you know, a thing which was going on like uh, they were stealing kidneys of children and they were selling. And they said, you are giving free food, free education because you are stealing our children's kidney. We don't want this. And there were young people who came and they were about to even hurt us and chase us out from that program. And we had a wonderful missionary family who was staying with me. They stayed in a small house. We all stayed in that house and that house was the evening school for the children. And this evening school, I have a principal who teaches the biblical things from the Bible, shares the stories. And we have a teacher who teaches the uh, secular studies. And then we have cooks who cook the food for the children. And we were all staying in that house. And there were a time when there was a group of young men who came to this evening school and they said, you need to get away from this village. We don't want any more because you are stealing the kidneys and also you're converting the children to Christianity, which we never did. We just taught them the Bible, the good discipline, the love of Jesus, the power of true love. Even though these children had parents, but they were not shown the true love. And they were waiting for this kind of a true love. And my dear friends, these young people, they said, you have to go away. If not, we will kill you. But we prayed. Children prayed. The, the group which came and threatened us that day, the very next day, from that group, a young man came to us in the morning where there was no school. We were just praying as a group in, the hut, in that house. And this young man came and stood. We were scared. We were, we were thinking, what is he going to do? Because they told us, tomorrow we should not see you here. And uh, it was amazing that this guy, young man, he came inside. He was so polite. He said, after we came last night, the guy who brought us all together, he was completely paralyzed. He could not move from his bed this morning. And his parents asked us to go talk to you all because we know after we came and threatened at you, he went back home. He was completely paralyzed. So we all went. This man asked us, come, please come and pray. Please come and see my friend. When we went to his house, we saw that guy was just lying. When he saw us, he was crying. He could not move, but he was able to speak. He said, I'm really sorry for what I did yesterday. You need to please pray that I will be cured. We knelt, we prayed for that young man. And also we asked the children to pray. And this thing, when the villagers heard, they were really scared. They thought, we cannot do harm to these people. They have some kind of power that will hurt us. My dear friends, we started praying for that 
young man. God answered the prayer. Within a week of time, he was completely healed. And he became our big support in that village. Whenever there were small problems among the people, they were there to stand beside us and encourage us, and they took care of all the problems. And one day, as we were uh, uh, praying in the evening school, one mother, she brought her son. She had this uh, rope tied on her forehead. And she was dragging her son and she was uh, very fast. She was running towards the school. And we were a little scared because every day there were problems. We were scared to see that thing. She came to the school and she said, what are you doing to my son? What are you teaching my son? And we told them, we are teaching them good things. We are disciplining them. That is all we do. And we give them good healthy food. No, I wanted to know because today I had a severe headache. And I couldn't bear the pain and I was crying and I was lying on my bed. My son came from the school, regular school. When he saw me lying on the bed, he threw his bag and came to me. He knelt and put his hand on my forehead. He started praying. He was doing something. And when I asked him, he said, I'm praying to Jesus. And that is a Hindu family. And she said, my son prayed to Jesus. And Jesus answered, my headache is completely gone. And she said, you people are teaching good things. You teach my son more good things. A lady from my Hindu community who have never tasted the love of Jesus, who have never seen the power of Jesus, when she heard this, when she saw it practically in her life, she was touched, my friends. The little seeds, what is sown in those hearts, what is taught to them. And that is what we, we read in Proverbs. Train up. When we train up these children in the way he should go, even when he's old, he will not forget. And that village has become a village for Jesus. Because we had nearly about 120 children in that village who attended the school, and the children who attended the school were really blessed. My dear friends, God is amazingly working through this wonderful program. And once when uh, myself and our worker, as we just finished the visiting and uh, we came down the hill, we happened to meet this wonderful friend. And we were just passing, and there was a truck which was going in front of us, and we could not see him standing there. Since the truck was going in front of us, all of a sudden the truck stopped, but we couldn't stop. We just moved a little further, then we saw him very close. It's a wild elephant. And uh, the driver, the person who was driving the bike, he's a Bible worker. After seeing this huge elephant, wild elephant, he didn't know what to do. And the bike stopped and he could not own the bike and I was sitting at the back and I was telling my friend, friend, please start the bike. If not, we are going to die. My dear friends, it was so frightening. It was so fearful that the person who was driving the bike, he started shivering, shaking. And I was sitting at the back and he was holding his shoulder. I told him, Brother Suresh, please start your bike. We prayed because he could not start the bike. And the elephant is still standing there. We were so close that the elephant, you know, after some time came running towards us. As we were praying, we prayed, Lord, you please help us. And it was so angry because it had its uh, old family. 
There was a small elephant and then the mother, father. It was a group of elephants. And this huge male elephant was very angry on us and he started coming close to us. He made this big noise, which was really loud. That was the first time myself and my brother Suresh heard this sound, this noise, very closely. It was like a thunder. He was so angry that he kicked the ground, the mud was just flying, and he was about to hold me because I was sitting at the back. He was just running and he was so ferocious, but we were praying. God helped us that day because we were doing his work. The elephant which came running just took a U-turn and went. All the other elephants followed him. What an amazing God we serve. He protected us. In the evening school, we teach them how to pray. And uh, we teach them the Bible. And also we teach them the secular studies. Every day's syllabus, and also we teach them good discipline, and at the end, we give them this nutritious food, which the children wait for the whole day. And this is our teacher, Sister Maliga, who works in one of our school, evening school, JFA evening school. And Maliga comes to the school every day, and she teaches the secular studies. She was married five years ago. She didn't have a baby. In India, when you're married and if you don't have a child after a year, they think that you are a curse. Her husband started talking very bad things on her, torturing her, and started beating her since she didn't have a baby. She was mentally upset and she was really in a kind of... Uh, depression, but she loved children. She came to our evening school as a teacher, even though there were so many problems at home since she didn't have children, a baby. But she came to school and she spent time with the children and she loved them so much. One day, she started crying. The principal, the pastor, the church pastor asked her, what was the problem? She opened her heart. She said, I am here teaching these many children, but I don't have a children, I don't have a child. I don't know what to do. But I see the children praying, and many prayers have been answered. Pastor, please pray for me. And I want the children to pray for me because I cannot go home. My husband and my in-laws are really torturing me. My husband is beating me, using bad language. I cannot stay in that house. Please pray that the situation will change and God will give me a child. Children started praying for their teacher. Every day they started praying for their teacher. By the grace of God, God answered the prayers of those children and saw the tears of that teacher who was faithful, teaching and loving those children. God answered the prayer and now she is seven months pregnant and the children are praying that God will give a beautiful baby. What an amazing God we serve. When the children pray, the Bible says God answers. And here we see that these children who come from Hindu background, who have tasted the love of Jesus, who have learned to know that there is power in prayer, when they pray faithfully, ask the Lord, God answers the prayer. This teacher was blessed. And this is Brother Anbu. Recently, this year, in the beginning of this year, there was a missionary team came from America to India to do six village program of evangelism, 10 days evangelism. And this wonderful brother, Anbu, he came every day to those meetings. 
When he first day, when he came the first day, the preacher, who happened to be a lady, she she went to him and she hugged him and she was showing this wonderful love, the true love, the power of true love. This guy started crying because there were no one who loved him, even his own parents. They don't want this guy because he, they felt that he is a waste. He's useless. They never took care of him. But this missionary, when she went and she didn't know who this guy is, she didn't know the language, but she showed the love of Jesus. Every day when she goes, she hugs this guy. And this guy comes first to the meeting just because there is someone who loved him. And the children in the village were watching this. And in the evening school, when we started the evening school in that village, children started seeing this wonderful love which was shown by this missionary towards this guy. They started talking to him. They started spending time with him, playing with him. That really touched his heart. And we have an evening school now. And this guy, he comes every day to the evening school. And we, we give him good food because he's, the whole day he waits for that food. The children plays with him and shares the love with him. And he's really, really happy. We are so happy that, oh, God has really touched this young man's heart now. He loved to spend time in the church rather spending time in his house because there is no one to talk to him. Show him the love. And uh, this is from a village where there is two sisters, one brother and a sister. They are studying in uh, ninth grade, another one in fourth grade. They were attending the first day church but they came to know that there is this program going on in the Seventh-day Adventist Church when they wanted to come here, but their pastor did not allow them. The pastor said, no, don't go there. It's not the true church. The pastor went and talked with his parents and he said, don't allow your children to that church. They're going to spoil your children. But the children wanted to come because their friends were coming to this evening school. One day, without telling their parents, they came to the evening school. They loved the songs, they loved the stories, they loved the love, they loved the food there. They went home, they told their parents, we wanted to go to that evening school because today we were able to learn so many good things which we, we have never learned in that church. And after that, they gave a very good food. And it was surprising to the parents because they thought a very different thing about this church because their pastor manipulated those things. And the parents said, okay, from tomorrow you can go there. For one reason, because the children were getting good food. And they went and told the pastor, we are just sending our children because they are giving food. If you can give us food, we will send them to your school, to your house. Since we don't have food, we have to send the children there. They are providing a healthy food. So these children started coming to the school. And the parents wanted to see what was happening in that school. Every day when they bring their children, they stay back and listen to the Bible stories and the prayers of the children. Their hearts were touched. They told the pastor, Pastor, please come to my house and pray. Because when we go to that church, we don't see this kind of uh, love, this kind of uh, way of worship. Children are well behaved here, rather in that church. Because that church does not bother to see the 
way our children are, to discipline the children. They started sending their children and they came and the pastor was invited to go to their house and the went, pastor went every day, gave them the Bible study and they started coming to the church on Sabbath as a family. And they were so happy to see the way the church was organized. The songs, the worship, the message. They felt that peace. And now, by the grace of God, the whole family is attending our church and taking Bible study. It is because of this wonderful evening program. My dear friends, I tell you through this evening program, when the children hear the power of prayer, when they go back home, when they are given food or when they are doing something, when there is a need in the house, when father and mother fights each other, these children pray, kneel and pray. Ask their heavenly father, living God, to take care of the needs, to bring peace in the house. Hindu families, Hindu children, taste and see that the Lord is good. When you taste, you cannot Give it up because he's tastier every day. That's what these children are experiencing in their life, in their practical life. My dear friends, it is a great blessing that God is wonderfully leading these children. And this is uh, about a young girl. Her mother was mentally ill. I didn't, she didn't have a father. And there was no one to take care of this, this girl. And her father was no, no more. And since the mother was ill, mentally ill, the grandmother was taking care of this wonderful girl. She didn't go to work because grandmother was very old and they were really in a very poor situation where the mother, grandmother was not able to take care of the hill mother and the granddaughter. She was struggling. That is when she came to know about this evening school in that village, in that church. JFA evening school, when she came to know, she came to this principal pastor and asked if we can admit, if she can admit her granddaughter in that school. By the grace of God, the pastor was so kind. He said, yes, the school is for these kinds of children. Please send your granddaughter. She started coming to the school every day. She was not going to school, to the regular school before, but the teacher took effort, more effort to teach this girl, such an intelligent girl, was just kept at home because there was no other way where they can go and learn. My dear friends, this girl could memorize so many memory verses which was taught in the evening school. During the talent night, she would recite these memory verses without seeing the Bible. She learned these stories. She was a very good artist. She could draw. She, was, she became the brilliant girl, and now she stands first in our school. Grandmother is so happy. The grandmother says, even if I die now, I will die in peace because I know my granddaughter has a shelter. There is someone to take care of my granddaughter. I know my daughter cannot take care of her because she needs someone to help. But I know now my granddaughter is safe in this church. So amazing to see how God is leading these children every day, miraculously. And to see how 
these children are coming to know about the love of Jesus. And this is about two girls who are from Hindu background. One day they got, they are our students in our uh, evening school. And one day they got measles, chicken pox. Both of them were affected. Immediately their father, they told these two girls that you both have to stay back at home and you do, cannot go to the evening school and we have to put you a neem garland. Neem trees in India are, seems to be one of their gods. They worship the neem tree. And since they worship the neem tree and they think that it is a holy tree, so they, they make this garland out of the neem leaves and they, they, they wanted to put on their children because they had chicken pox. But these two children denied. We said, we don't want this. We don't want any more Hindu rituals because we know if we pray, Jesus will heal us. And they begged their father not to do this. Father was very upset with them. He said, you're going to die if you don't do what I'm saying. They said, no, we are going to pray. They stood firm on their faith. They stood firm on what they learned. They stood firm on the power of prayer. They had this great faith. My pastor, my teacher, my principal taught me, if you pray and ask, God will definitely provide you, answer you. That faith in them, you know, with that faith, they started praying. It was amazing that God healed those two children without any medication, without that uh, neem garland. When father saw that, he was amazed. He thought the children will die. But now he saw without any medication, only through prayer, these two children were healed. It was an amazing thing to see. And these children, within a week of time, they came back to the evening school. They shared this witness with all the other children. Father, their father came to the evening school and he said, Jesus Christ is a living God. And he said, his children taught him the power of Jesus Christ. Took away all the idols from his house. And told the pastor, you please come and teach us from the Bible. God opened the door in that house. My dear friends, how amazing God is leading these wonderful children. Through these children, God is doing mighty things. And uh, this is about uh, a girl who's in our evening school. She comes from a Hindu background. And her father is, is a Hindu priest. And uh, this, these, this girl, unfortunately, her mother passed away. And since they had only father, so the father without, he, does, he didn't want to send them to the evening school. But since there was no other way, so he sent these girls to the evening school, this girl particularly. And then uh, one of her relative, a cousin brother, they both were coming to the evening school. She was very upset because she was very sad because she, she lost her mother. And father was also very sad because he lost his wife. This girl came to the evening school with her cousin. They both started learning the good things in the evening school. They participated in the worship. They learned to pray. They learned to sing songs. Day by day, this girl was very happy. And the teacher showed the love, motherly love, and took care of this girl. 
And this girl was really touched. And she wanted to stay back in the evening school because she doesn't want to go home. She got the love which was not there in the house. When she was in the evening school, she was very happy. But when she went home, she was very sad. But the teacher taught her that you need to pray. God will be your mother. You pray to him. You ask him. She started praying. She started listening to these wonderful stories, which really strengthened her spirituality. She became very happy. And she had that hope that Jesus is with her. The girl who was really very sad, God changed her completely. And that changed her father's heart. And she started telling her father, don't be worried. We have Jesus. But in the beginning, he was not happy. But he just did not like the Hindu gods because he prayed. He did all the rituals. But nothing answered his prayers. His wife passed away. He started loving Jesus. He and his daughter now, along with their cousin, God touched their heart and they are coming to the church now. My dear friends, these families, these particular people, you cannot go with your Bible directly, knock the door and teach them about God. They will not accept. But when we teach these little children, these children are trained now as disciples. And they are doing the work of God in the houses where we cannot enter. With the Bible. What an amazing uh, way God is using these uh, wonderful children in that particular village. And not only in that village, Right now, we have got 51 evening schools, few in the north and few in the south. But if you, if you talk about India, the statistic report says that there are so many hundreds of villages, thousands of villages in India, where there are children who are very poor, who do not have a healthy food, who do not have a food at all. Dying without food, without knowing Jesus, without having proper education. My dear friends, we need to pray that God will open many more schools. And this is a particular village where we add a uh, wonderful uh, 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 witness from one m Muslim girl. She comes to our sc evening school because... Father does not go for work. He's a sick person. Mother goes for work and they are very poor. So the mother sent this girl to this Christian school, evening school. She comes here. She learns about prayer. She learns about singing songs. She learns about Jesus. And she loves to sing song. And mostly she loves because this Bible, particularly because she has read about the story about Jacob was a son of Isaac, which is also in Quran. And about the Tubal 12 tribes, which is also in Quran. And she loved the book of Daniel, Matthew and Psalms. She loved to read Bible. And now she has fell in love with Jesus. And she shares with her parents now. Since after she came to the school, her character was completely changed. Her behavior was changed. The parents saw that they were touched. I could see a change in my girl, which I did not see before. They started trusting this Seventh-day Adventist church. And by the grace of God, that family is now uh, knowing about Jesus. 
This is about a village called Amaravadi. And here, when we first met this village, when God showed us this village, they were very, it's a very small village on top of a hill. And you can see this is the village. And there are so many children in that village because there is about 20 to 25 families. And when we first went there, we saw those children who were like, you know, dirty. Because they didn't have water, they didn't have proper food, they didn't have electricity, they didn't have anything. There was nothing in that village. And moreover, we came to know that in this village, when a girl is 13 years, she's married. At the age of 16, she'll be a mother for at least two children. It was very, very painful. And the girls were not sent to the school. And even the boys, they go for work when they are still small. And here, this girl who was, uh, uh, you know, wanted to study, but she was not sent to school. When our Bible worker went there, JFA Bible worker visited that uh, uh, village. The people were scared to come near to her because she felt that, they felt that she's a high class, you know, caste. She comes from that high caste. And since they are untouchable, they could not go near to her. But it took so many days for the Bible worker to get along with them and talk to them and show them that all are equal. And she became friends with them when they asked the people, what is your need? The people said, see our children, they are without food. Because we don't have job, we don't have a regular income. Do something so that our children can have food. God spoke in those hearts which need to be spoken and opened this wonderful evening school for that wonderful village. Now, by the grace of God, we are giving them food and education which they were not getting before. The village is so happy, so blessed. Particularly, the teacher of this evening school was a student when she was very young. And now she is graduated her 12th grade. And now she's the only girl who have completed 12th grade. And she wanted to become the teacher because she says, I wanted my fellow girls and the fellow my brethren who are here in this village also to be to get education, to be educated, and to have a good food. By the grace of God, we have this wonderful evening school there. And the children from that village, they come every day in the evening. They have this food and they enjoy this food. And the studies which is taught to them. And now the parents are sending the children to the school now. Thank God. Now not only that, we have started a small church there. A prayer house. They all are coming and gathering every Sabbath. And we are doing the worship there along with those people who have never heard about Jesus. Before, now God has opened this wonderful door where they are able to learn about Jesus. And this is about a guy who's studying in fifth grade. And her sister is studying in uh, sixth grade. And uh, her, uh, their father, as he was going for work, he met with an accident. And he was admitted in the hospital. And these two children were there with their mother. Husband was admitted in the hospital, but his wife, she ran with another man. And she married and she never came back till today. But these two children were standing near the gate of that hospital. They didn't know what to do and where to go. 
father is in the ICU in the hospital and mother just left and went. One of our JFA Bible worker, as he was going for visiting these sick people, he found these two children near the gate and they were crying. He went and talked with them and asked them what was the problem. They explained to him what happened. The pastor went and prayed for that wonderful father who was in the ICU. Started visiting regularly. When the, father, when the pastor asked the children, you do, do you have anyone else? They said, yes, we have a grandmother in a village. And then the pastor took these children to the village. Grandmother started crying. How can I take care of these two children? I don't go for any work. There is no job. How am I going to feed these children? My friends, the pastor, he encouraged the grandmother, don't be worried. We have this wonderful program in this church, which is just near to your house. Please send your children there, grandchildren. She started sending these two children to our evening school. Now, by the grace of God, these children, not only studying there, they also started praying for their father. The father was very sick. He was took one after the other. God answered the prayers. The pastor visited him regularly. And now he's back home and he's happy. The children are happy. The Hindu family, now they are ready to be, become Christians. They have accepted Jesus Christ. My dear friends, God is wonderfully leading these children who have never heard about Jesus before. And this is how we teach the children. They sit in order, they are disciplined, and uh, they study well. And the teachers spend time like one-to-one, -one, not just because they have come, we have to teach. It's not like that. And when they are given food, they sit in order. And this is about Vinod. And this was the first time we had this uh, evan uh, evangelism through our evening school. And these two, the four people there, the boy, he is Vinod. And, uh, you know, the, the, the family is a Hindu family. Father is a very strong Hindu person. And in the beginning, he never allowed Vinod to come to the evening school. But Vinod wanted to come here because most of his friends were in the evening school. And he wanted to be with his friends. And the friends used to talk about the evening school. He was really impressed. And he wanted to join this team. But his father never allowed him. So Vinod was very upset, but he, want, he went and came and talked with the pastor and told the pastor, Pastor, please come and talk to my father. Get permission. So the pastor went and talked with the father. Father said, no, it's a Christian church. I don't want to send my son there. Pastor came back. But Vinod, without the permission of his father, during this evening time, he used to come and attend this evening school. He started to pray. He started to sing song. He started to, uh, you know, get involved in these activities. Started studying. And one day, in the middle of the night, his sister was demon possessed. She started screaming. So loud that the villagers all came out. She took off the dress, clothes from her, and she ran naked, screaming. All were watching her. The father, mother, and Vinod, they were running back of her. Because she wanted to go jump into the well, which was near her house. Kill herself. Father and mother and Vinod, they were running back of her to somehow stop her. When father tried to stop her, got a hold of her, but he couldn't do that. He could not stop her. This young man, we know, this small boy, he went 
He caught hold of her sister's hand. And he, she just stopped. He was able to control. She, he was able to stop her. And Vinod knelt and prayed for his sister. God, help my sister. And after praying, he caught hold of the hand and he brought her to the house. On the way, he asked his father to give his phone and call the pastor. It was middle of the night. But the pastor answered the, uh, answered the phone and he came to Vinod's house. And they brought this girl and dressed her and she was sitting there and pastor came. They, were, they started praying. The father and the mother, they were watching what was happening there to their daughter. This was not that one day. It was happening many times, but the father couldn't do anything. He tried his best and he could not do anything. But his son, when he prayed to the living God, God answered his prayer. And the father saw how powerful was that prayer, how powerful was Jesus. Where his idols, his gods were not able to control his daughter, but the prayer was able to control. And they started, the, uh, the pastor and Vinod prayed for that girl. The pastor said after the prayer to the pastor, he said, uh, the father told the pastor, pastor, you please come to my house. Please come to my house. Please teach about this wonderful Bible. Teach about Jesus. Teach about prayer. And I'm so happy, even though I didn't allow my son, but he came to this evening school without my knowledge. When he, uh, when he went and got hold of my daughter's hand, when he started praying for her, he was able to control. When I tried to control, I couldn't do that. He was amazed. And he invited the pastor to give him Bible study. The whole family took Bible study regularly. Vinod started coming to the evening school. And he was really, really blessed. And this was the, you can see the picture in this village. Through the evening school in that church, we had three days evangelism. You can see the children, they brought their parents. This evangelism, this meeting was for the parents. We talked about the creation. We talked about many doctrines from the Bible. Three days, regularly the parents attended. They took notes. And at the end of the meeting, by the grace of God, Vinod, his sister who was possessed by the devil, she, and now she is completely delivered. She took baptism and her mother along with the mother, even the grandmother, said, I want to be baptized. What an amazing God we serve, my friends. And my, I tell you, my friends, the, the, when we teach these children when they are young, they are going to become the pillars for God. They are going to become the disciples for God. And that is what Sister White says in... Uh, uh, in her writing, she says, the lessons of in instruction given in childhood and youth will be a blessing to them throughout their lifetime. And if you see in Psalms 27.10, it says, when my father and my mother forsakes me, then the Lord will take me up. That is what is happening in these evening schools. Father, mother, there are so many families, separated families. Children without father, children without mother, children who are orphans. In India, there are so many are there without knowing where to go and how to get help. 
my dear friends, God is showing this wonderful opportunity. We are praying that by the end of this year, God will open many evening schools in India so that thousands of children can be blessed. Not only physically, but also spiritually. That they will know Jesus Christ. That they will know the power of prayer. That they will know that there is one person who still loves them. That is not the end for them. What they see, what is happening in their family is not the end for them. There is another life with Jesus. When they accept this Jesus Christ as their personal savior, there is an eternal life. More than the adults, when the children come to know about this truth, the love of Jesus, when they taste this love, they never give up under any circumstances. Every Friday in the evening, in the talent night, we hear a lot of witnesses praising God. It can, be, it can be a simple thing. Some children, they say that I've lost my pencil. I prayed God gave my pencil. I needed this notebook, but I didn't have when I prayed. God gave me this notebook. My father said, I cannot, but my, my Jesus gave me. What a mighty God we serve. So I encourage you to please pray with us and be a part of this wonderful God's family so that God's name can be proclaimed, can be glorified through these children. And in future, these villages will be a Christian village. You need not to send a Bible worker. You need not to send a pastor there. But these children are going to stand for Jesus. This is an amazing ministry. I pray that God will use you to uphold God's work in India. Because there are so many children dying knowing, without knowing Jesus. Dying without knowing Jesus. Please pray for them. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful time. We pray that you would unite us with you, O oh Lord. You would unite us with the heavenly family so that we can be a part of your family in doing your ministry. Countries where people have not known about you, children who have not known about you, who have never tasted your love, pray that you would open these doors, that your name can be glorified. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen.